I should preface this one uh, with a little bit of foreground. I went outside already and did a <clears throat> bit that I'll show you here next uh, in reverse chronological order here. <laughs> Uh, but first, uh, a lot of people, I, I believe the whole flat earth argument was originally contrived in recent history by atheists, probably, who wanted to make Christians look foolish. That's my professional estimate. <laughs> uh, having dealt with people for a long time on this kind of thing, I think I'm pretty much as professional as it gets in terms of making those kind of assessments. Uh, this is exactly the kind of thing <laughs> atheists would do. They're just always loving calling Christians flat earthers and they of course have no substantiation for it because you couldn't find a single Christian on the planet prior to this pretty much who believed in flat earth. Uh, and before they started trying to make these videos that make it look like there's scientific credible data. Scientific credible data for people who've never taken trigonometry scientific credible data for people who don't understand that air has friction and as uh, it interacts with the surface. Of course, just picture, like I told a friend today who asked about it, picture that the Earth was already spinning, okay? It's just, uh, but it had no atmosphere. And all of a sudden, the atmosphere was just dropped onto it, or even thrown the reverse direction. I don't care, maybe a big swirly of, you know. The fact is, once it came into gravitational interaction with the surface of the Earth, there would be a massive surface tornado. <laughs> it would churn up all kinds of ground and that energy would serve to bring a point of equi equilibrium eventually which would cause the entire um, um, earth to have a stable gradient gradually. The, the velocities in the upper atmosphere as the earth rotated would be falling way behind you know initially but then as friction interacted molecule to molecule all the way up there would be this slow, gradual process started with a very drastic process on the surface of the Earth where rapidly molecules were grabbed through through interactions with objects that they ran into, rocks and so forth, and uh, these rocks were uh, eroded away even and some of them plucked up and thrown into this turbulence that would er initially erupt on the surface if that kind of scenario really played out. Now, uh, <clears throat> whatever the case, I think God created it all and, and just, you know, put it there in a stable way as he wanted to. It probably was never a, earth, a surface tornado when the atmosphere was dropped on it. <laughs> but you just say there was for the point of argument. Uh, you would eventually reach a point of equilibrium. The sand and stuff that got thrown up in through this tornado on the surface would eventually sink down as, as gradually the... Uh, equilibrium was reached where molecule to molecule you the friction brought everything to almost the same speed or enough to where where there's no huge difference I believe you go higher and higher you do see a wind gradient usually you know it's uh, the surface drags down the, ta the whatever the prevailing wind is but the Sun comes into play and then it you know creates changes due to the thermal energy that is is distributed depending on cloud cover, depending on whether you're on the bright or the dark side of the earth and all these variables that um, enter into creating the weather patterns we see and the uh, the wind patterns we see. So um, basically yeah that that kind of argument that how would we be sitting on a thousand mile an hour ball you know spinning well there you go that's how. Whoops. Oh wait no I remember. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about just a lot of people who are Christians and, or Bible-believing people get uh, roped into this thought that there are various scriptures that speak about the shape of the earth. Uh, earth means dirt. Diatomaceous earth, that's not a globe. That's not, you know, the entire picture. It's just dirt, okay? There, if you've never heard that term, look it up. <laughs> diatomaceous earth. See, earth has, is still used in our modern day, is my point, as just dirt. The earth beneath us is just your local dirt. So when the Bible talks about earth, it isn't necessarily talking, and you have to look at the context and make your own determination. Is this indicating it's talking about the planet as a whole? Um, now, there is a reference in Isaiah which talks about the circle of the earth. 
Now that's the only really curious one in the Bible as far as I know. The only one that seems to slant towards saying something that might indicate something about the overall shape of the earth. Because you look locally in your dirt, you don't see anything uh, close to a circle there. And um, so what you really have here, you know, is a language which had already termed the moon and the sun as circles. Because that's what you see when you look at them. So that is a curious reference in Isaiah because they had no way to know that the earth was like the sun and moon in those days. So this is a prophecy. This is a prophecy of the earth's shape, and it's given in the language of that day, the circle of the moon, the circle of the sun, the circle of the earth. That was all they were describing those spheroids in terms of in those days. Uh, nobody had any idea the sun was a spheroid or the moon was a spheroid. So in the language of those people, it would have been the circle of the earth. Thank you, and let's move on. Greetings, greetings. There goes my putty cat. Hmm, he's a good mouser. I'm going to do a quick dry erase ex explanation of why the Earth is not flat. Let's hypothesize that it is flat. Let's go to Mount Hood here, and I'm just going to draw, you know, this rough model of what we're looking at. Hood. Hood. It's 11,200 feet. Now you can do a scale model yourself. Make an inch equal to a thousand feet, for instance. Go out in a parking lot and you could model this with uh, 105 miles. Just uh, figure that out, and it would be 44 feet on that scale, roughly, to our Rainier. It's still kind of cold out here, but uh, beautiful Montana here. 14,000, what is it, 400 or something? Something like that. Now, uh, roughly halfway between here, you got your Mount Adams. Now, it's, I think it's a little closer to Hood. It's like just a little, I think if you went like 21 feet in your scale model, figure that out and verify it before I'm going by memory here. Adams at 12,000, whatever it is, 300 or whatever it is, 400 feet, I can't remember. Something like that. Anyway, it's uh, halfway between is the essential point here. Now, uh, I didn't draw that very to scale, did I? Let's see, this one is that tall, therefore that one should be about that tall, really. 14,400 is close. I'm just rough estimate, just to get the idea of what you should see. And this one should be just a hair taller than that, too. It should be somewhere in there. Uh, yes, okay, here's a nice photograph here on my screen I'll just use. It is from the summit, it says, of Mount Hood. So here we have Mount Adams. Here we have Mount Rainier. Now if you look here, you've got, uh, with this ruler, I, I have a horizon line down here, it looks like. It's kind of a, you know, so you'll see is <laughs> clearly Mount Adams is higher. This is a telephoto, by the way, telephoto image. So see the base comes somewhere in here, as I showed in, in my uh, crude diagram there. But this is a telephoto image, and it's showing uh, a... Com because these mountains are not that far apart in size. Uh, this one is quite a bit bigger, but not enormously bigger, such that at twice the distance, it would look almost the same size. It's not, you know, twice as high. It's only 2,000 feet higher. So... <laughs> This is clearly a telephoto image. Yeah, I imagine they used a 100 millimeter, 100 and, 125, 130 millimeter, whatever lens on this thing to get that kind of perspective at least. And uh, maybe more. It doesn't say what they used here, but at least it shows us because your line of sight is irrelevant. You are on an 11,000 foot surface, and if you looked off and saw that peak, 
and you do not see a higher peak here, then the Earth isn't flat. That's all there is to it. Mount Rainier has to be higher, not lower, if the Earth is truly flat. It is not. It is clearly, clearly lower. You see that, that line right there is the horizon. That, it may tilt as much as that in the image, but I doubt it. I think that's due to, the, again, the telephoto perspective and just the narrow view, and they're probably tilting the camera a little bit. But anyway, in the worst case scenario, the horizon would be like that, and still if you move it up, clearly it's not taller. It's not. Even in the worst stretch of the imagination, there is no way <laughs> that it is actually uh, showing up like it has a higher perspective, which it would in the line of sight if it were a flat Earth. Uh, the ge geometry there with you at 11, the geometry of you at 11,250 feet elevation, and then you're only going up here another uh, thousand feet ish. The peak of this is only a thousand feet, but this one then is another 2,000, and this one is just under halfway between the two. So, yeah, you definitely. Um, definitely be seeing uh, on a flat earth a higher peak but I, I suspect really the horizon is more like this that's the black blackest part there it's got from the look of things I mean if the mountain is the snow line is any indicator it's got to be like that so you would be yeah, hitting like that and so it's clearly yeah clearly Adams is peaking way over the top of where the top of Rainier appears in this picture. But it'd be nice if I had one without a telephoto lens, but at least this will let you see clearly that you are looking at Rainier and <laughs> Adams, which is nice. You get a good perspective there, and it makes the essential point on the line of sight. So that is the conclusion of this and the proof that absolutely the Earth is spheroid, and you can calculate that drop, and it'll give you the same, same math from any point on Earth. Again, the uh, from if you go north to Brunswick, it's called Brunswick Mountain. Uh, in Canada, you can see Rainier, and that's 195 miles, and that's the longest line of sight on the planet. There should be views from Mount Hood to Mount Shasta, for instance, but you can't see that because it's under the horizon line. It just is way too far. I, I don't, I can't find a longer view on Earth than 195 miles. If somebody has proof that there is one. Please submit that. Thank you.